All right, welcome everybody. Um, we are here at another great webinar, and um, I really enjoy these. And I just uh, before you guys basically heard of my story, how I heard about this, I want to bring on somebody who I've known basically from the beginning. Um, and 12 years ago, he kind of stirred up a lot of uh, really cool interest in the water because uh, Wade is an amazing guy. And Wade, uh, Wade Lightheart is his name. And he actually has won three uh, Mr. Canada's. And uh, he is also an ambassador of the American Anti-Cancer Institute, uh, of which I am also. And uh, he's got a plethora of knowledge. He graduated from uh, college in New Brunswick and with a degree in, I want to say, physiology and nutrition. Exercise physiology. Yep. Exercise physiology. And uh, he also has designed and also uh, formulates a lot of nutritional products. And uh, he's going to talk a little bit about those too, what he does as well. But his experience with the water, when I heard it 12 years ago, was like, wow, because I've done a little bit of bodybuilding, nothing like the, the extent that Wade has done. And uh, it is a very dedicated sport, dedicated to when you start working out, your dieting. Dieting is like, like half of it, more than half of it. And to be strict on your diet with what they eat is just, you know, amazing. And to stick with it for three or four months is even harder. So um, Wade is a really good friend. Um, I'm glad that he has been with us for so long and, and just loves the water. But he's got an amazing story, like I said. And I want to introduce the amazing Wade Lightheart. Hey, thanks, for, thanks for uh, bringing me on, John. It's great to uh, connect with everybody in the Congan family. Yeah. Now, Wade, I love your story, and I think it's one that people have not really, a lot of new people have not heard at all. And when you told it, when you first told it, and it was on video and also on um, uh, voice, I was just like, wow, this is really cool because this is something that I do. I'm really interested in athletics. Can you tell us your story and how you heard about this and your background? Yeah, sure. So uh, real simple. We're going all the way back to 2007. So as I said, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, I was living in Vancouver at the time and I was running a holistic health clinic. I had retired from the sport of bodybuilding uh, four years prior after competing in the Mr. Universe and going through a health crisis. And for those who don't understand is when you're getting for ready for these things, you often go through a very restrictive diet. Um, you get a lot of brain fog, joint aching. It's not, it looks great cosmetically, but there is this huge price. And I had a major health crisis after that contest. And I decided that I was not going to go down that road anymore. Even though I love the sport, I felt that the cost to my health for performance. So many athletes sacrifice health in order to hit their per performance parameters. And I think that's important for people to run. They, they understand the consequences. They just go for it. I think there was a study done after the Dubbin inquiry, which was during the Ben Johnson uh, drug, yeah. the, you know, failed drug test. And they did, they pulled Olympic athletes and they said 90, 95% of the athletes said uh, that they would take a drug if they would die and, and, they, and there was a 95% chance that they would die with five years if it guaranteed them the gold medal. So not that I was taking drugs or anything like that, but I, I think it's really important for people to understand kind of the psyche of a high performance athlete, what they're willing to do and how they're willing to put aside or how dedicated they might be to that. And um, so that's that part. So I, but I, you know, pushed the envelope as far as I could. And I, I said, okay, you know, that's enough. We've compromised my health. It's time to retire. And I opened up a holistic health clinic and I started teaching people about holistic practices, rebuilt my health. Lo and behold, some guys came to my place, um, which happens a lot. You know, they want to teach me the latest pill, potion, lotion, whatever it is to kind of get me to name, put my name to something, uh, use my credibility. And I was like, like everything else, you, you, what happens when you get those approaches? And I'm sharing this from this angle, because I think it's really important for Conga distributors to hear this, like what's, what's the athlete that you think that you want to approach? What's the coach you want to approach, the gym you want to approach? You have to realize when these guys came to me, they went into the category of the thousands of other people that were trying to tell me how this was going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. And that there's, there's a certain psychic resistance and I put that wall up. 
However, the individuals that approached me were extremely persistent, almost, I mean, almost obnoxiously per persistent. And that's another key. They, they kept coming back to me, look, you got to try this, it's different. Come on, blah, blah, blah. And finally, I just went, okay, I'm just going to go to this demo to shut these people up. Okay. I just need to stop them from bringing this information to me. And I went to the place, I had my first drink of water and I instantly knew that this was different. I, like immediately I could, um, when you're a high performance athlete, you get extremely well tuned to your body. You really get to know what's going on and what's going on. And although and many athletes might not be able to explain the scientific uh, aspects of what's going on. They're highly intuitively aware of what's going on. And I took that in, I could feel it hydrating me at a different level. I could feel it tasted different. It went down my throat differently. And I immediately said, well, give me another one of those and give me another one of those and give me another one of those. And so during the course of the presentation, I probably drank a gallon of this water. It was like, like, like you know, it was an, at those times that were like two hour presentations. And, uh, and you know, this, the advocates, I would say, didn't really have the scientific background. They, they had a pretty good sales pitch in a story, but I was like, you know, there's some stuff here. There's some stuff here. It's worth investigating. I said, I said, well, you want to get one? I'm like, no. Uh, but what I will do is I'll take two of these five liter jugs, which is like a gallon each of, of water each. And I said, I'm going to drink two of these a day for the next few weeks because I ration, if this water is different and it's everything that you said, I'm going to have to change all the water in my body, just like you change the oil in the car. You don't change one quart, you change the entire amount. So I understood that component. And I did. And during that time, I was still, although I wasn't competing, I was still training pretty extensively, five times a week, very, you know, hardcore kind of training. And I instantly noticed that my body composition was changing rapidly. And I wasn't changing my diet, but my body composition was changing. My recovery rate was extreme. In other words, where I would normally experience what many people would call excruciating levels of delayed onset muscle soreness in the body parts I was training. I wasn't training. I wasn't feeling that to the same extent. And I'm like, how is that possible? So I kept going back to the demonstration and trying to poke holes in it while I'm doing, running this experiment. Lo and behold, I said, okay, maybe I've been convinced by a placebo effect. Maybe I've just like, they've done some kind of voodoo on my brain and I'm believing this and this is creating a change. We all know this. So I said, I know what I can't fake. I cannot fake a competitive result. Uh, so I contacted the National Bodybuilding Association at that time and I said, hey, uh, when is your next contest? And they said, well, we've got a contest coming in three and a half weeks. Um, it's a national championship. Said, well, I said, I'm gonna, I want to enter it. And they said, well, based on your prior success, I had won a national championship before. They said, normally you got to qualify, but you're a former national champion. You can come back. We know you're going to be in shape. Now, keep in mind, I was training, but I was not in contest shape. Uh, so I, I endeavored to do a three-month training program, a three-month contest prep, prep in three weeks. So I would literally had to train three times the amount I would be training under normal conditions, plus a whole lot of other stuff I always had to do in order to just manage the recovery rate. And I said, if I can even survive this, uh, this would be remarkable, let alone be competitively successful. And the good news was not only did I have the energy to do it, so I knew there was some energy requirement that I was getting out of this. Number two, I knew that there was something that was taking away the delayed onset muscle soreness. And number three, there was some hydration effect that all my other nutritional supplements, all my other uh, things that I was doing and, uh, were, were being accelerated by this new water medium. Long story short, three and a half weeks later, I won both of my classes in the national championship as a, as a, a junior masters and as a uh, middleweight, uh, light middleweight competitor and ended up going back to the national championships three months later, won that and uh, went to the, excuse me, went to the world championships again. So, so that like, it all just kind of happened, bang, 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 bang. And so what happened, the story got out, the story got out and there was a whole bunch of misinformation 
And so people were using my name and misquoting me and this happens and I caution every uh, Enagic distributor from doing that. Please get the information straight from the source. And one of the people who would produce a really nice brochure was pretty nice. I called him up and I said, hey, look, you know, you've kind of done something. You've taken my name, you've taken my image. You haven't said the right things. You haven't done the... Tell you what, let's just write a book about this. We'll set the record straight. You do the book and everything and you can release it out to the public and uh, then we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll tell Cause I, I ended up buying a machine. I said, this machine. And at that time I said, I believe that this water will be the de facto hydration tool for amateur, serious amateur and professional athletes over and above everything else, regardless. And I didn't have the scientific validation. However, I did end up testing what's called an electro interstitial water scan, which has been used oftentimes for Olympic athletes. And I think there's a doctor out of Colorado that was using it, a, a Dr. Carmichael. And it's a way of testing all of the organs hydration levels. And so I started bringing people into my clinic, people that weren't athletes, people that were sick, people that were trying to get healthy, people that were trying to lose all these people that were coming to my clinic. I said, Hey, you know what? We'd test them. They're in a chronic state of dehydration. Virtually everybody that came in was in a chronic state. Like, and we put them on a hydration program and in three weeks time, they were completely hydrated and we couldn't replicate those results with other types of water. And I was like, wow, this is really miraculous because when you're fully hydrated, not just hydrated in your body, but hydrated internally, hydrated in your organs, hydrated in your cells, hydrated in your skin, hydrated in your brain, um, you think differently, you act differently, you have different energy parameters. And lo and behold, uh, I guess it was about 10 years later, uh, Dr. Horst Filzer, who I met not that long after that event at an event in, um, at an event in California, we just struck up a conversation and struck up a friendship. I didn't know who he was. He didn't know who he was. And then he went off and actually proved this in human trials 10 years later, what I knew at that moment. And he was able to prove that it was an electrical based antioxidant. It were loose, delayed onset muscle soreness and increased energy production at the mitochondria in humans. And so I was so grateful when he came out with that information because he validated what I intuitively knew and understood at that time as an athlete, but didn't have the scientific chops as a doctor filter to be able to demonstrate this in human, uh, in human trials. And, uh, you know, literally, I didn't want anything to do with the business, but I started telling people about it. And after the first year, the business was so darn good to me part-time. I was like, well, maybe I should learn how the compensation program and all this sort of stuff works. And since that time, it's been a, a real blessing in my life. And I've got to re, 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 uh, meet and help tens of thousands of people around the world. And it's just an awesome part, uh, experience to be part of. Now, wait, I'm going to go back because um, going back to your experience, because you gave up on bodybuilding because it took so much out of you after uh, yeah. two, three weeks uh, or two, three months after winning the second Mr. Canada, you had gained like 30 pounds. You felt really sluggish, everything. And you, you said that when you started drinking the water, you said you, you could quote unquote, that you felt like you could run, up, run through the walls yeah. and that your VO2 max just shot up incredibly. Yeah. And um, can you touch a little bit about that? And also, what we want to hear too is the body fat that you had in two weeks, the body fat loss where you decided, you know what? Yeah. I decided to do something I couldn't, that never thought possible and was to enter the Mr. Canada with only three weeks preparation. Yeah. So a couple of things on that. So to go back to what happened to me after the Mr. Universe contest, the first time I, um, I gained 42 pounds in fat and water in 11 weeks after that contest. And I had just really, my body had shut down from, I had been dieting steadily for 11 months in preparation for that show, winning a bunch of competitions and maintaining a, a, a very low body fat level, which was very, was compromising my health. You also, part of the contest stuff is you dehydrate yourself before competitions. And that's probably one of the most dangerous practices that bodybuilders perform in order to get what they call a dry, hard look. It's kind of an insider look, and that's how you get that kind of granite type look to your muscles, which is very temporary for a short period of time, but there's consequences. And some of those consequences was a rebound and release of various chemicals in the body that causes dysfunction. I had thrown off my complete digestive tract. And so that took me about six months to recover from that. And that's when I chose to hang up the trunks at that time, because I realized that the consequences 
of competitive nature were, were probably worth more than I would ever be as an athlete. You know, there was no money in the sport, really. There was nothing out there. So I, I said, you know, it was a health decision. It was time to move on with my life because I value my health over anything else. So um, now under the best conditions of dieting, now keep in mind, I'm not here to say that the water makes you lose weight or anything else like that. However, what I was able to replicate when I was engaged in my, my recomp, the best ever I would get would be somewhere between two and three pounds of body fat loss in a single week on a steady state calorie deprivation over a bodybuilding cycle which you're looking at anywhere from uh, 12 to 20 weeks normal is your contest prep. 12 on the low side, 20 weeks usually was my contest cycle to, in order to lose enough body fat. So that's my normal program and I'm going to get in contest shape in three and a half weeks. So obviously I need to break those parameters. So from a body fat perspective, I was able to replicate what I would have been able to do in somewhere between 12 and 16 weeks and three and a half. And I estimated that my body fat loss was 2.2 to 2.5 times what it was before. Now, what do I count that for? Number one, the water allowed me to train far more often, far more frequently. So I could train harder, longer, and more frequently, which had a metabolic benefit to my body, which it helped me recompensate better. The second factor is the antioxidant factor allowed to remove the, the acids and stuff that builds up from delayed onset muscle. And I do believe that the water, because of the lower osmotic pressure, was able to push those toxic wastes out of the cellular environment and out into my lymphatic system. And I was jumping on a rebounder to accelerate the lymphatic movement. So I was doing exercises at a level I couldn't recover from in conjunction and that and with the water, I was able to recover from that and remove the, the waste material. Because when you're burning body fat, there's all sorts of chemicals and agents and stuff that is stored in your fat tissues that are being released in the body and creates a toxic load. And that's what oftentimes makes you feel tired and lethargic and hungry and all this stuff. And this is an area of, of body fat recomposition that a lot of people don't talk about, they don't know about. It's a little bit more on the sophisticated side. People just assume that body fat is just some ugly stuff but it does serve a metabolic process is that's where we store a lot of chemical toxins inside the body. And so when you release that, there's a toxic load that's put on your liver that needs to be managed. And that's what I had to do. And, and, and Congan water allowed me to do that in a very sophisticated way, in a way that I could never possibly imagine or replicate any other way. And that's why I was you know, doubly impressed with the effectiveness of the product for athletes or for people who wanted a better life, better health, better energy, better hydration. So, and your VO2 max, how do you contribute that to, to great, yeah. greatly increasing? Yeah, the, so this is, so just so people don't know what might not know what that is. So VO2 max is uh, your basic oxygen carrying capacity of your lungs. And that is how efficiently you're able and what's your maximum amount of oxygen uptake that you can take into your body because that's going to be ferreted out to your cells, uh, you know, where your mitochondrial engines are and it's, and it's through a process of electron covalent transfer and we'll get into all the chemical side of it. But basically your ability to convert oxygen into energy metabolism. Okay. And so if you're talking the greatest you know, uh, VO2 athletes would be people like on the Tour de France or endurance runners or endurance swimmers or endurance um, speed skaters. These type of people have just ridiculous, almost unhuman levels of VO2 maxes. Now, under normal training parameters, you can increase your VO2 max maybe one two points in very, you know, specific style of training on a, on a, 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 you know, a couple weeks or to a month time frame, you know, and that, and you're training specifically. I was not training specifically for VO2 max. And I do not believe the training I was doing was actually increasing my oxygen carrying capacity. Now, in order to run these tests, they'll put you on a bike, they'll put you on a snare master and they'll check your oxygen and they, do a mathematical formula to determine what your VO2 max is. And so I did one before I started and I did one after. 
and my VO2 max went up like, I don't think it was six points. I forget exact number. It was like ridiculous amounts. It was like, how is this even possible? And the only thing I accredit it to was an increase of um, oxygen efficiency at the mitochondrial level. Now, I had no way of proving this, right? I have no way. Like, this is just like, I said, I don't know. That's the only thing I could possibly think that it was. Well, guess what? Again, years later, 10 years, a decade later, Dr. Horace Filter comes into the picture and guess, yes, he's proven that the water increase, increases um, mitochondrial energy production. And mitochondria is the, the engine, the factory of energy production at the cell. And the better that you produce energy. So there was an efficiency in that electron covalent transfer that was showing up as a VO2 max, but it was really just an efficiency at a cellular level that wasn't accounted for on a VO2 max. And so uh, that was exciting and it was nice to see that finally proven. It's like, okay, that's how I think the mechanism happened. That's awesome. And what about like your hair, your skin, uh, things like that? Did you notice the difference? Cause I know, I know it's a difference with my hair and skin. It just, it's, it's moisturized at a level that I'd never seen before. Yeah, that's a definite, um, a couple things. I'm, I have, um, very, very light complexion. I'm, you know, as most people know, I'm totally blonde. And um, cup two things that happened. Number one, my tolerance to heat in a desert environment like I am here in Sedona went up exponentially. In other words, I can go on a two or three hour hike in the desert now and not need a drink of water because I'm, I'm fully hydrated. So I, my, my ability to withstand dehydration went up. When that happens, you also get uh, what I would call a different look to your skin. Your skin gets fuller and plumper. So if you look at most of the skin treatment systems that are out there, they're designed to increase hydration at a cellular level. Now, going back to my clinic, cellular dehydration. So people would be like, wait, do you look really glowing or something like and I thought that was interesting and I you know you, you know everybody looks in the mirror and thinks well geez I wish I was a little bit more beautiful or better looking but uh uh you know I felt like I felt like I, I looked healthier I looked healthy you know there's a pe there's people that you meet in life and they have that healthy glow their hair shines their skin shines and people were commenting about me. Now, usually when I'm contest dieting, I would look kind of drawn and haggard. And I was actually looking vibrant and energetic. And so that's, of course, you know, just anecdotal research uh, like, or anecdotal feedback. But since that time, I've probably had, I don't know, a thousand people come up to me and tell me the same thing, that their hair changed color or it got thicker or they didn't have as many split ends or they didn't use as much moisturizer on the skin, especially if they're using the, the, the skin moisturizer where you're exfoliating with the, with the, uh, the um, acid water. Uh, that's been really good for people. And so if you're doing that, it seems to accelerate because it takes the dead cells off the skin and, and makes you that nice healthy glow. Yeah, I know uh, a lot of women spend a lot of money on their lotions, their potions and things like that. And just by switching to their water, this, this water, it helps in every single level. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I've, I've done a contest once where I basically, as a, as a bodybuilder, you go off of water basically for two days, right? And then when the contest, you're, you're having little sips of water, maybe having about eight ounces a day, which is very hard on your body. But you, which I've never heard of before, we're drinking as much water through the contest and you actually won. Yeah, so here's a really interesting component. And so you have to understand there's a component inside your uh, cells, which is called osmotic pressure. And osmotic pressure of the average cell in your body would be at what's measured at 80 dynes. And so if you're talking tap water, mineral water, carbonated water, that um, hydration level will be the in measured in dimes would be much more than 80. So it'd be 90, 100, 110. I've seen 120. And what that means is, is you can consume water and it stays outside of the cell. It doesn't actually penetrate through the aquaporins and hydrates the cell. It sits external to the cell. 
Now, as a bodybuilder, the goal is to get maximum water in the cell and no water outside because what happens if you're really, really dehydrated, the skin will shrink down to the muscle. And so it gets this kind of uh, translucent, like you were wrapped in saran wrap. And that, they, 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 that's actually collective terminology. You're peeled or dialed or shredded or dry and hard. That's the idea. In order to achieve that, bodybuilders have uh, several methodologies that they do. And you mentioned one of them is they'll go off and they, they'll cut their water two days, three days. So you'll drink an excessive amount of water beforehand, maybe two or three times your normal amount. So your body starts shedding all this water and then you stop it completely and your body keeps shredding the water and then you, ex you, you completely dehydrate yourself. And I don't recommend that. Some bodybuilders in the non-tested events will use the diuretics and all sorts of horrific things. I've seen people doing sweats. You also see this in things like UFC, and wrestling, where they've got a cut to make weight, they use saunas, it's very, very unhealthy, it's very, very damaging, and can put you in a severe health crisis. Well, since I was going to this championship, I, had, I didn't think I had any business being there, only you know, going for three and a half weeks, I said, you know, and I, I noticed when I was getting into in competition leanness, I'm like, I'm drinking the water, but I don't seem to have the water on the outside of the cell anymore, I don't think I need to dehydrate like everybody else. I'll just keep drinking the water like I normally am. And I did, and I was able to win the show. And my competitors were seeing me backstage and I'm drinking water laughing, thinking <laughs> this is funny because when you're that dehydrated, let me tell you, it's a miserable experience. You do not want to do that. It's horrible, it's horrific, it's terrible. And, uh, and it, it seemed like a joke to me, almost surreal that I was able to do that. And I believe that's because the the electrolysis process that is involved in producing Kangen water uh, reduces the osmotic pressure of the water. What that means is it lowers it below 80 dynes on the cellular level. And that means it more easily penetrates into the cell, pushing out the toxins and hydrating the cell in the way that it, you can do it. And that is why it tends to hydrate you much faster, both post-workout um, or if you've been out for a long hike, or you've been out in the sun really much, or you've been in a situation flying on an airplane where you're extremely dehydrated, you can rehydrate much faster than you can with other types of water. You don't get the bloating because you would gun the water down and you feel that sitting in your stomach. You don't feel that with Kangen water. It goes right into the cells where your body needs it and uh, the waste gets pushed out and exited out through the lymphatic system. So you do develop a new relationship with the bathroom but it certainly is an effective way for uh, you know, getting yourself hydrated very, very quickly. Right, so um, when you share this water with people and you talk to athletes, what do you say to them as far as uh, you know, to get them to be interested? Yeah, great question. So a couple of things, you, you, know, you always ask qualifying questions. You know, um, hello, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Athlete. Um, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing and everything. I got a quick questions for you, you might be able to help me with. And they'll be like, sure, you know, what, what is this? So, so how important is hydration to your athletic performance and recovery? And they'll say, well, it's super important. Every, you know, every, and it's, so what kind of beverages do you consume in order to meet your hydration standards? And they'll tell you. And that might be anything from spring water to distilled water to sports beverages to electrolyte beverages to water with salt, all kinds of different things. And like, right. Oh, and, and so what's the reason that you're using those particular beverages for? So you, you, you keep your powder dry before you, you just, you know, fire hose them. And they'll tell you the reasons and say, well, that's very interesting. I said, um, I, 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 I are you aware or have you heard that there is athletes using um, different types of water to accelerate hydration? And they go, yes, or they'll go, no. And it's either one, it's like, oh, what have you heard people using to, 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 to rehydrate quicker? And they'll tell you and they say, well, have you heard of a product called Kangen water? And they'll say yes or no. And they say, hey, look, 
Um, look, I know you get this all the time. I know everybody's hitting you up on that and I don't want to uh, take away from what you're currently doing or anything, but would you be open to giving this a trial because um, there's been a lot of scientific literature and a lot of anecdotal experience and a lot of athletes that are using this and saying they're, ex they're experiencing extraordinary results and I'd be willing to provide you this at no charge to you and, and let you and hear what your results are because it may accelerate your performance. I don't know if it will, but it, would you be open to giving it a try? By doing that, you're not coming in as that you're hammering this person that I know more than you do about your sport, that I've got all the answers because they're looking at you and you're like, what do you know about my sport? You're like, you know, out of shape, it's, you know, whatever, you know, and, and so you have to be able to soft that. You need to appeal to their ego. You need to be able to ask questions to lead them into experience as opposed to coming at them and fire hosing them or machine gunning them with facts. And then, and then casually, but emphatically invite them to an opportunity of trying this without a risk and reporting back the results. The other thing is, um, and as a backup, if they, if they you know, hold you back, you can say, um, well, would you be interested in sharing with the, uh, maybe some other people on your team or some competitors that you're going against would like to try this experiment? Because I think it's, it's, it's quite well demonstrated that gives you an athletic advantage. And if you're not interested in them, I'm determined to, you know, spread the word around here and uh, I'll, I'm willing to go out to your competitors or maybe, you know, somebody from your, your gym or your union or your team or whatever it happens to be, because I'm confident that this is going to be the de facto hydration uh, product of high performance athletes around the world. And if you're not interested, that's okay. I'm just going to go on to the next one. So you need to be able to take it away from them. And uh, that usually, when you have that kind of solid posture, it changes how they respond to you. And to get that, again, you need to have your questions ready. You need to know your bullet points. You need to be able to invite and appeal to their ego. You need to not machine gun them or fire hose them and then provide an opportunity. And when you do that, go all in. Be the person that you like, service them, provide those opportunities share those signets, don't be invasive, don't ask them to get on all these things and, and take away from their, they're athletes, they're focused on being the best athlete they can. They're not interested in businesses, they're not interested in making money, they're not interested in all the things that you think might be important to their life. They're interested in becoming the best athlete they can possibly be, and that's the way that you need to appeal to it, but you need to appeal to it as an invitation as opposed to a hammer. Yeah, I think that's so important, especially because I've actually dealt with people on Facebook and things like that and asked them. Uh, and I came across kind of hammering them with information like, you know, I know better than you. And uh, that helps out so much when you're actually at, asking them questions and four, three or four questions beforehand to kind of get them thinking and uh, thinking about their hydration, et cetera. Now, uh, now Wade, did you have some... Uh, uh, digestion issues before? Well, you know, going back to, um, going back to my 2003 Mr. Universe situation, one of the areas when you gain 42 pounds of fat and water in 11 weeks, obviously something's gone wrong, uh, severely. And, and yes, my digestion was, uh, was, was, uh, affected significantly, which led me into the research that started this company, by optimizers where I developed enzymes and probiotics and hydrochloric acid and intestinal cleansers and parasite stuff and, you know, gluten enzymes and all that sort of stuff. And that's what I've been doing ever since that time. And we've been in business for a very, very long time. And I'm very grateful to do that. But one of the things that um, is essential to proper digestion is proper hydration, because what's ironic is you need to be properly hydrated to produce hydrochloric acid in the body which is an essential component of digestion the other thing is when you're dealing with uh, bloating gas and constipation oftentimes it's because you're chronically dehydrated and you don't have enough water in the large intestines in order to properly eliminate and people 
because of chronic dehydration, their colon and intestinal tract will all get torsed and just and, and just twisted, and they don't go to the bathroom very well. And so one of the things that that happened to, for me is the water was great in increasing the hydration levels inside my intestinal tract. So I had better elimination, better bowel movements as well, which I do attest as a benefit to the water. And uh, all my executive team on the company all has Kongan water machines because we know the efficacy and how it works hand in hand with our digestive aids that we do. And is also a key element in, I would call detoxification processes or, or cleanses and things like that. Hydration is a very, very critical component, especially in the intestinal tract. And I think a lot of people underestimate that there, many of their digestive issues are coming from poor hydration levels on a chronic level. Mm -hmm. So, so and it sounds like you've been kind of uh, trying to work through those problems that you had uh, many years ago after that first contest and de designing supplements and things like that uh, to, to help with that, which you started your company. I know you do travel around uh, and do a lot of seminars on digestion. That's like your, your main topic of uh, expertise is is uh, digestion and problems with the gut and uh, intestines and things like that. And what's the name of the company that you have? Yeah, so my company is called Bioptimizers. And uh, like I said, we've been in business for 16 years. I wanted to start it out to help out bodybuilders who were going to get into the trouble as I did. And then eventually uh, we ended up rebranding as a digestive uh, and health optimization company about five or six years ago. And you can We've been able to go all around the world and, uh, you know, change you know, tens of thousands of people's lives. And it's uh, just another adjunct to the whole message that we have in, uh, in Agic. It's great. And I, I really love the Enagic family and the concern that people have for their own health and sharing that message in their home and in their community and nationally. And I really feel akin to everybody in Enagic for that messaging because um, it, it's a common, all health and all disease starts in your intelligence track and the foundational aspect of any program is proper hydration and I do believe that Kongan water pro provides superior hydration than anything else uh, I've seen on the marketplace and it also accelerates the uptake and utilization of nutritional supplements and that can't go underestimated I get even today I get tons of reports of how people have found when they combine Kong and water with their nutritional supplements, that they get a compounding effect. They get more of the nutritional supplement than they did before. And so um, I've had many people come to me on a very limited budget uh, with my Bioptimizers company and, and, I'll, and they'll say, what's the one thing I need to do? And I said, well, you need to go get a Kong and water machine. And once you've done that, and your health improves radically, then you come back and I'll, I'll teach you all the other things first. Next. Well, I'm glad you touched on that because that was going to be my next thing I was going to ask you was about the, the optimization of nutrients and supplements, uh, protein powders, everything just gets into the cells three to 400% better. And therefore, I have a lot of people have been telling me they've been able to cut down on their vitamin and the supplement intake, which has saved them, you know, two, three hundred dollars a month just on that, which has been, you know, and plus they feel the, the difference better also. They feel more of an effect from their supplements. So. You know, and there's an easy test that people can do. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a little trick for people to try. It's, it's, it's kind of, a, it could be considered extreme, so I'll caveat on tour. Um, there's a thing in nutrition industry called a niacin flush. And so you can take a B vitamin, which is called ni niacin, and people would take this to elicit a flush in the body. It opens up blood flow to the skin. And so you'll get a lot of blood flow. And, it, and if you take too much of it, it causes a kind of a burning or tingly sensation for anywhere from 15 to 30 to 45 minutes. It's relatively harmless, but it's been used in many uh, programs for detoxification or increasing uh, delivery of nutrients and things like that. Now, here's interesting. Once you, get used, once you get used to the niacin flush, you can do that and you'll get uh, what's called a tolerance to it. Your blood vessels open up and you stay pretty well. So let's say that's on, uh, say, 200 milligrams of niacin. You used to get a flush and eventually you stabilize and it doesn't cause a flush anymore. Well, one of the things, I, I know a lot of people that do this in the nutritional industry. One of the things that was happening is they take their standard doses of, of niacin 
but then they would drink it with Congan water and they would get the niacin flush again. And so on a lower, so, so the same doses that, that, that they wouldn't get a flush, they would get a flush again. And I credit that to, again, you're putting more niacin back into the body. That's a, a very easy demonstrable uh, experiment where you can get anecdotal information or experiential clinical data, data that you're getting more of that particular supplement into your cells, into the body where it wants. And I attribute that to Congan water. Uh, and I've also noticed as well as another side note, there's a great test that you can take called the NutriCell test. And this is kind of the state of the art uh, testing for vitamin and mineral absorption inside the body. They draw your blood, they send it out to a lab. And I've had people who you, you get a specific profile of what vitamins and what minerals you're not uptaking, what ones that you, you need mostly or you don't, you, that you're deficient in, and then you can target your nutrition for. It's a great test. It's awesome. And I think uh, anybody could benefit from taking that. Well, interesting enough, if we take people who are using Kangen water with nutritional supplements and people who are not using Kangen water with nutritional supplements, using the SpectraCell test, the people who are using the Kangen water and the nutritional supplementation overcome their deficiencies much faster than the people who are taking just the nutritional supplements. So again, that's another clinical experience that would indicate, again, this isn't double blind studies, this is just clinical experience from dealing with people one-on-one, -on -one, that they get a better result in the delivery of their nutritional supplements to the, the body cells that they need. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned niacin because I was first turned on to niacin by this bodybuilder. He answered the door. He was just a bright red. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the heck happened? His eyes were bloodshot. I go, what happened to you? He goes, I took 2,000 milligrams of niacin. I'm like, holy cow. So I went home and did it. I took, I think, 1,000 milligrams. And sure enough, bright red, eyes bloodshot. So yeah. what I did uh, years ago <laughs> to get out of work, find an audition or something, I'm like, okay, so I'd pop a couple of, couple of those. I wait 15 minutes and I go to my boss and go, I don't feel good. I'm just, and my boss goes, oh my gosh, you look horrible. Go home. And then I eat some food and some water. And 15 minutes later, it all flush out. It was. <laughs> That's hilarious. So anyway. Yeah, crazy niacin stories, right? Yeah. So I, I, by the way, I wouldn't recommend anybody take no. more than 500 milligrams. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Please, please uh, caveat him, Tor. Please don't. Uh, please. <laughs> Start well, off we're not recommending doing that, but I was just wanted to give some, some of the anecdotal stories of little weird experiments. I'm a, what a lot of people call a biohacker. I believe in biological optimization. We advocate that with my 12 week uh, awesome health course. I give it away if anybody wants it from our website where you can learn all the tips and tricks that I use. I have also two videos inside there explaining the different types of hydration, explaining how the Kongan water machines and doing a great demonstration so people can know if they want to access any of that, they just go to biooptimizers.com. Biooptimizers.com? Yeah, and there's a, what's called the 12-week awesome health course, double your energy in 12 weeks, and uh, it's free. There's a couple of great videos on Kongan. You can kind of select, it's five to 15 minute videos on everything you can imagine. We talk about uh, the benefits and people can leverage that at any time. Yeah, it's just one O. 101 by optimizers. Okay. Yeah. You saw bio optimizers. Yeah. I'm a really good speller. Okay. Um, there we go. Is that right? That's right. So. Okay. Yeah. Hey, um, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much, Wade. Uh, I just, I just love hearing your story, where you came from, giving up on bodybuilding and just, and, winning Mr. Canada twice and just giving up saying, this is, this is just taking too much out of me and having the Kong and water just totally turn everything around to where you're able to win the Mr. Or go and enter the Mr. Canada contest with only three weeks preparation and just, and then <laughs> drinking water as much water as you could through the competition just, just blows me away because uh, that's, that's phenomenal. And that basically tells you the power of this water and how amazing it is. And thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly, for being the co-host. Thank you, Wade, for, for all your time. And uh, we got to get together now that you're in Venice Beach. I was just talked to Bob Gridelli about it. So thank you so much for all your expertise and all your help. And we will talk to you guys later. Thanks so okay, much. Take care, guys. Have a great night. And uh, to all my Congan friends out there, we'll hope to see you at a, an event whenever they get back soon enough. But until then, uh, we'll have to just go by Zoom. Las Vegas this
uh, September, right? September Fingers crossed. 2nd, we'll see. 4th, we'll see. Let's hope so. I, I, I believe so. I let's think, hope so. Let's, yeah. let's hope they have it. All right. So, uh, Wade, we stopped. Um,